Well, hey, YouTube, welcome back, my friends, once again to Jack's Tech Hut. I hope you enjoyed that new intro. I hope it wasn't too long. Something I worked on uh, this past weekend, put it together, and I thought it looked pretty cool, so I thought I would go ahead and try it out tonight on this particular uh, episode. So we're going to get right into the lesson tonight, and we are talking about Kali Linux installing a different desktop and a new terminal program. These are just two things I like to do. You, by all means, do not have to do this. It's just something I like to do because I like uh, my Kali Linux to, you know, just look a little different or a little better, I guess. Uh, but XFC is the lightweight uh, desktop environment that comes preloaded with Kali Linux. And I've been using it for years, and it's absolutely fine. It's not a problem at all. But I wanted my desktop to be a little bit different and something I like looking at for long periods of time. So I installed GNOME. The GNOME desktop is G-N-O-M-E. It's very easy to install and very simple terminal command. All we're going to do is we're going to open up the terminal command and we're going to type the line. And here's the line right here. sudo apt install kali-desktop-gnome. Okay, so I'm going to pull this out of the way. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and open a terminal. So I'm going to open my terminal here. And all we're going to do is just type this simple command, which I'll just bring it back up on our screen here. So you can do this yourself. If you have your Kali Linux open, just scroll down to this command. Oh, we'll scroll back up here. All right. Of course, we're not going to be able to keep both windows open. So sudo app install. So we're going to do sudo apt install kali dash desktop dash gnome remember it's g n o m e and you're going to simply hit enter it's going to ask you for that super secret password and if you're using the kali Linux, i told you to install for your virtual box it's very simple because the password's also kali and we'll hit enter now, as you can see, mine was very quick there because I already have it installed. And that's what you're looking at right now as the actual desktop. This is actually my Kali running. You see where it has this now docking station here on the bottom. Okay, it has this nice little dock down here. We'll get into that in a minute. But it's just nice to look at. And I'm going to show you here really quickly. I'm going to do a reboot of my Kali Linux. And I'm going to show you how you choose a different desktop once it's installed. I've had a lot of students ask me, well, I installed it and I rebooted and it's still the XFCE. It's still the, you know, many, many times over. Simply because they haven't changed it. So I'm going to close down my terminal and we're going to go ahead and reboot this machine. So let's go ahead and uh, click on the power here. And we're going to simply restart. Okay, restart the machine. Let's go ahead and get this uh, going here. I hope everybody's doing well in this series. I see I got some new uh, subscribers out there. Thank you so much for subscribing to the channel and uh, spread the word around to your friends. If you have other tech friends out there, tell them about this great new channel, Jack's Tech Hut. Okay, we're going to just uh, let this run up. Here's booting. And we're going to go ahead and start up our Kali Linux uh, instance. A lot of times I'll get people that will email me and say, Jack, your computer's really slow. Well, this is a virtual machine I'm running on top of Windows 10. Um, and I'm using Windows 10 and not my normal Linux machines. Just because I figure this is probably what most of you are running is Windows 10 or Windows 11. So I want to try to be in the same environment that you work in day in and day out and be able to work you through these different uh, scenarios. And uh, it'll have the same look and feel for you. Okay, so there's that great uh, Cali logo coming up. That always reminds me of like a race car logo. All right, let's go ahead and get this uh, loaded up here. All right, so once you came into your log on screen, you're going to click on your name on your Cali Linux. And down here at the very bottom right, you'll see this little gear indicator. This is where you can collect your different sessions you'll see the xfce is still in there so the defaults there and the and the gnome classic is there 
I have GNOME selected, okay? So that's going to be the environment that I'm booting into. Now, you can install many different desktops. You can install Cinnamon or Mate or there's many different ones. And I told you, that's the beauty of Linux. You can make Linux look and feel however you want it to feel. But for now, we're going to go ahead with the GNOME. And I'm going to type in my super secret password, which you guys know now is Kali. And we're going to go ahead and launch the uh, Kali desktop here. So there we go. There's our Kali desktop, and we are running GNOME. And GNOME is where we have the dock down here in the bottom. As you've seen earlier, if I click on the applications, we still have the applications up here. It still looks just like XFCE would look because this is what this is all you would have. But now you added the actual dock on the bottom here. Okay, we have our Firefox. We have our terminal program. We have our um, burp suite. But underneath this little box over here, these little six different squares. If I click on that, check this out. It gives me icon representations of all of the programs. What I also like about this is it gives you the search you can type up here. So if you if you know the program's name, such as terminal, yeah, terminal, <laughs> there we go, okay, you can actually just bring up terminal and you can just open it up, all right? It's going to open up right on our screen. So this is actual terminal. Now let me show you something in terminal right now. If I right click in terminal, you see where I got read only, preferences, new window. So if I wanna run another command, I can select a new window and I can have another window open. Okay, I could do that again, new window. Because sometimes when you're penetration testing or when you're uh, running a, uh, a hack or one of these hacking programs or password cracker program, you may in fact have multiple windows open. I might be running Nmap up here. I might be running uh, maybe an air crack here. And up here, I might be running a password cracker all at the same time, all right? I don't really like this three window deal. So let's close these windows out. I'm gonna show you a better way to do it, okay? Let me bring my Word document back up here. And I'm still looking for a place to put all these documents so you guys can have these. All right, so we did this part here. This is all the way already, okay? We installed the GNOME desktop. Once the installation is complete, you reboot the machine like we did. You log on, and you make sure you choose the desktop you wish to load. That's what we just did, okay? And that's out of the way. The next software I always install in a brand new, in any Linux environment that I'm working in, and my normal daily driver is Linux Mint. I've been using Linux Mint for a long time. My wife uses Linux Mint, so I, you know, I know how to... Um, configure it. I know how to run it really, really well. I like the desktop environment. It's just comfortable for me to use. But I always install a new terminal called Terminator. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do that now. We're going to come over back to our terminal, and we're going to type in, same thing, sudo apt install. And a lot of people hate Linux because they're like, I can use command line. It's not really bad. Okay, Terminator. We're going to hit install. It's going to ask for our super secret password. Put that in. It's going to find the packages. It's going to ask us, do we want to continue? We'll hit a capital Y and we'll hit enter. And this will actually install Terminator, which is a different terminal program. So you can interact with the shell, which is a bunch of hoopla, right? I'm talking in circles here. But just say this is a window that we're going to run our uh, our command line programs in. It's going to be Terminator. Once you get that installed, I'm going to make sure here. Should be able to get to the very last panel and you'll now see Terminator. If you right click on Terminator, you can say pin to dash. Okay. Now, what's nice about that, it's going to pin it to our dash. You can move these around. So I'm just pulling it with my mouse to the left. And I'm going to put, and you'll learn as you run Linux more and more, you want your terminal to be close. A lot of people either keep it on the left or they keep it over here on the right. Okay. If there's a program in here you don't want, like Burp Suite, I probably don't need that in there. So I'm going to right click on it, click on unpin, right? And I can take that out of there. That's not a big deal. We can just remove it. Okay. But what we're going to do next is we are going to simply click on applications again. And you'll also see Terminator in here. There's Terminator right here. Let's click on Terminator. So as you see, it looks just like the terminal program that we just had up, right? Here's what I like about this. Let's pull this out a little bit. 
So instead of having all those multiple windows open, if I right click in here, I can split it horizontally or vertically. Okay, horizontal or vertical. Let's split it vertically. Now I have two independent windows. Let me see if I can't blow this one up. So I'm doing control, shift, and the plus key. And I can blow this one up independently. All right. So you could be running something over here like end map, or you could be running something over here. Um, you know, a, a, another pro program, maybe a air crack, right? You could be running over there. Um, you could be maybe looking at your files over here. Uh, dash A, maybe we're looking at some files. Maybe we need to create a directory. We can clear in window independently. So you can see where it's just really nice to be able to run all these different uh, terminal windows here. Let's open this up even more. Let's right click over here and we're gonna say split this uh, horizontally. So now you see we have another terminal here on the bottom. It's just really a nice way to work and you can split these guys and girls out there as many times as you want. We can maybe split this one over here vertically again and we have even more windows to work in. So again, that's Terminator. It works absolutely amazing and I truly enjoy Terminator. So let me see what else we got. Now we can just close all the terminals together. Got our doc back up there. Let's go back to our Word document. Okay, so there you go. Just by splitting the windows. Install the Terminator again by using sudo space app space install space Terminator. So two very easy things I wanted to show you in this particular episode. And again, I hope you're enjoying learning about Kali Linux and some of the versatility this has. Again, many people tell you don't use this as your daily desktop operating system because Kali has an inheritance of running as root and everything's running with escalated privileges. So what does that mean is if somebody wants on your system and they can come through Kali, believe it or not, even the best made penetration testing software can be hacked. So this software is, like I said, um, inherently open as root privileges. So if somebody can get in there, they can start running many, many, many commands because we are actually running as root. Okay, so there you have it. So folks, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Jack's Tech Hut. I do have a couple things I might be throwing in here soon. I, I have an old laptop uh, that I actually purchased off of eBay that I've reconditioned. And I want to show you this not expensive to get started for penetration testing and learning. You don't have to use your main system. You know, right now we're using a virtual machine, which is absolutely awesome. But you can also use a old laptop and just repurpose it. And maybe you would put Kali Linux on and just use that as your hacking and penetration testing system. So I may show you that. I might do some videos around uh, how easy it is to get that up and running and, and how actually cheap I found this laptop for. It's nothing to write home about. I wouldn't carry it to work every day, but you know, then again, it's just a, it's a tool that we might have. So thank you so much for watching this episode of Jack's Tech Hut. And uh, definitely if you enjoy the videos, you know, give it that old thumbs up and, and I'm not going to ask you to subscribe, you know, it, but if you like the videos, if you think you want to come back more, you know how you can uh, make it so you can follow me easily. I don't have to really ask you to do that. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you join me here on the next video of Jack's Tech Hut and this Kali Linux series of penetration and hacking. Um, and we'll see you back here very soon. Remember, until then, keep practicing and keep working at it and you'll get it too. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.